Welcome back to another episode. Today's video is going to be all about cleaning and um, yeah, restoring um, old systems for instance. Basically I wanted to show you in this video how I clean all of my video game stuff and I also wanted to show you all the tools that I use and of course all the cleaning agents that I use and maybe this video can be helpful for other video game collectors and since there have been done a lot of those cleaning videos in the last couple of years I thought I'd also make one and uh, yeah, show all my methods and maybe there are one or two tips that you might never heard of before or that yeah, in the end maybe there are some useful tips for other video game collectors out there or for other people who wanted to start collecting video games and yeah, I'm also gonna show you how to clean video game systems or how I clean those video game systems, how to clean uh, video game controllers, how to get rid of price tags for instance on game boxes like those ones or how to get rid of old scotch tape or other kinds of tapes on gaming boxes and so on and so on. So this is going to be a very big video I guess slash uh, basically cleaning all this stuff is a very big topic so yeah better let's get started so let's go First we're gonna start with all the cleaning agents that I used and the first one is just a regular window cleaner or Windex and yeah I use this stuff basically to clean all my CDs and also the laser lenses in CD based video game systems like for instance in the PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2 or 3DO or whatever and you can also use it to clean the contacts of uh, video game cartridges and in the beginning I used this stuff to clean the contacts. Good, then the next one that I use is this one and this stuff I use to remove stickers and price tags um, on video game boxes and what this is, um, I mean it says on the, um, on the can KH uh, remover, basically what it is, it is a wax and silicone remover. This stuff is used normally in the car industry and uh, I've worked with this stuff on a daily basis for over four years because in my first job, um, yeah, I used this stuff a lot because I was a car painter and we used that stuff to remove all kinds of greases and tars and also um, adhesives from stickers and everything from uh, parts from cars so that we could clean those and we could work on those parts and later on prepare them to um, do the paint jobs on those cars and it's a pretty awesome um, yeah cleaning agent and I've used it since I've started collecting video games but in the end you don't have to buy this or find this anywhere because in the end it's this almost the same stuff as Gugon and I would highly recommend Gugon over this uh, silicone remover as we called it me and my work buddies back in the days because um, yeah like I said I have <coughs> use this stuff since I started collecting video games and I used it to clean all kinds of stuff and it worked all, always perfectly fine but uh, yeah lately I have run into some issues with this stuff and basically the issue that I have now is that every time I use this to clean um, stickers slash um, adhesives from um, plastic video game cases or anything uh, I've noticed that, yeah, nowadays this silicone remover um, gets pretty aggressive on see-through or clear plastic. So 
basically when I use it on um, CD cases or video game cases, plastic video game cases and it really attacks the plastic and makes it dull and later on you're gonna see me also use this stuff uh, and I still will use it but only on um, yeah, cardboard boxes, for instance, of video games and systems. And, you, and I still can use it to clean some um, adhesive um, residues uh, on video game systems or anything, but I can't really use it anymore on um, plastic see-through or clear cases. And basically, uh, a couple of years ago, I yeah, I also cleaned laser lenses with this stuff and everything worked perfectly fine, but uh, this is also the reason I had to record this twice, because at the first time I said, the, uh, yeah, all the cool stuff that you can do with this stuff, and later on when I cleaned a lot of cases in front of the camera, uh, all of a sudden, every time I applied it on a plastic, on a see-through plastic, it really got very aggressive and you can remove it later uh, and I'll show you this later on uh, if you have a similar problem or you get a game case that also has some white stains, let's call it like that, um, then you can remove it with um, car polish and yeah, like I said, I'm gonna show you it later on. But in the end, if you wanna uh, remove any kinds of um, stickers and price tags or adhesive residues, then yeah, you should get the goo gun. This is also stuff that I use today, especially with the plastic cases. And this is pretty cool stuff. In the end, you can find this very easily on eBay or on Amazon. But I also wanted to show you that I use also this stuff Okay, but let's continue with um, some other stuff that I use or other cleaning agents. The next one is this one right here. This is Silit Bang and this is basically a commercial um, grease remover that I guess you can find everywhere in supermarkets or whatever and it's mainly used for uh, cleaning kitchen uh, appliances or kitchen workspaces or whatever and I use this stuff mostly for surface cleaning especially um, of uh, yeah video game cartridges or systems <clears throat> and you can also use it to clean the the contacts of um, cartridges and also you can use the goo gun for instance for surface cleaning but I'm gonna show you later on that in some cases it is actually better to use just a regular cleaning agent like this one uh, instead of using one of the powerful um, cleaning agents like the Gugon for instance because basically Gugon was meant to remove tar, greases like it is mentioned on the, uh, on the bottle and caulk and silicone and whatever okay then the next cleaning agent that I also use very often is this one this is isopropanol and it says on the box active cleaner and this uh, has 99.5% isopropanol. Uh, I also heard that uh, you get the stuff with 70% or whatever. So I don't know if it really uh, helps that you have a higher concentration of the isopropanol but what I use this stuff for is basically to clean circuit boards and also contacts uh, and this is the best stuff that I ever used when it comes to cleaning uh, circuit boards especially if you have to solder and desolder some stuff and repair circuit boards this is really the best stuff to remove uh, for instance the residue of uh, yeah of a leak capacitor or whatever so it's also good to remove some kind of acids on the circuit boards and like I said before I also use it to clean the video game cartridges slash the, um, the contacts of video game cartridges it's a pretty cool stuff then the next cleaning agent that I use also very often is just a regular dishwashing soap and I use dishwashing soap very often because I really try to clean all my systems and controllers and especially if I get an old console new to my collection then I try to disassemble them as best as possible and then, then I take all the plastic parts and I wash them with warm water and with some of the dish uh, washing soap in my sink 
um, and yeah you can really clean all those parts very good just with some regular dishwashing soap and you can also use it for instance to clean um, yeah CDs it is not recommended but actually you can also wash your CDs CD games music CDs whatever in the sink with warm water with hand warm water and also with some dishwashing soap but only wash it if you want to wash it uh, yeah in the sink then wash it with your hands and don't use any other accessory or tools or anything um, I don't normally wash my CDs but in some cases yeah I had to do it and yeah never got any problems with it only one thing that you have to keep in mind never uh, scrap away uh, any of the dirt on the CD or anything with your fingernails or whatever because you're gonna scratch up the, the CD and especially if it's on the, the printed side where you have the, the, yeah, the name of the game or whatever then you can really damage the, the surface and you may end up damaging the CD slash you can't load the, the games anymore. Okay but next we come to this thing and this is called um, Nitroverdünnung, is the German uh, name, but basically what it is, it is a cellulose thinner and it is basically a paint remover and this stuff is normally used to um, clean all the tools that you uh, work with if you want to apply some paint, so in the end it's a brush cleaner and you can also clean your paint guns uh, and other tools with this stuff it's a uh, very powerful very aggressive stuff and i use it very rarely i only use it to remove let's say some sharpie on cartridge games if somebody um, yeah draw his name on my cartridge with a sharpie or with, with a permanent marker or whatever and sometimes you can also use it if yeah if there's some paint on the system or whatever then I also try it with this stuff but you have to be very careful with the stuff because it's pretty aggressive and it can also attack uh, the the plastic of let's say controls and of um, yeah video game systems or computers or whatever then the next stuff that I also use is this here this is WD-40 <clears throat> this is also very well known um, yeah, cleaning agent and it can do many amazing stuff uh, I mean it's moisture repelling then you can uh, grease your doors for instance and you can also grease up uh, old scissors garden scissors you can use it to uh, clean tools and whatever and uh, it can also help you with corrosion and uh, yeah can help you to remove old rusty uh, bolts or screws or whatever so it's a pretty cool stuff but in the end I use it also very rarely because I only use it to uh, yeah give old video game systems especially if they have a black color like for instance an Atari 2600 or a PlayStation 2 or whatever uh, you can give it a very nice shiny finish with this stuff so after I cleaned everything then I uh, apply this to a piece of cloth and uh, just go over the, the system and it gives it a very nice finish and uh, yeah it, it looks very good afterwards you get a really nice shine and it, it also protects the plastic and everything so this is actually the, the only thing that I use it for and I've heard you can also use it to remove um, yeah some residue adhesive residue so uh, in the end you can also use it to remove stickers and price tags and then there's also another way that I know the, to remove um, stickers and price tags for instance this is an old car painter trick I never tried it before but I've heard you can also use some lighter fluid like for instance the, the Zippo lighters they have those Zippo lighter fluids and with this stuff you can also uh, remove adhesive residue as far as I've heard I've never tried it before okay this and the last two things that I also use 
are car polishes. I have two here. Now this is a rough car polish and this is a very fine car polish and this is actually a combination of polish and wax. So in the end if you use this stuff, um, yeah, you can polish, let's say, your car and uh, it also adds a protective layer that's what the wax is basically for and I use the car polish basically to polish screens of handheld video game systems of handheld games and also sometimes I use it to polish um, the cases of handheld games then I also use them to polish uh, CD cases and plastic uh, game cases and you can also use it actually to polish the, the contacts of video game cartridges that can be very helpful and I'm actually gonna show you one example where it really comes handy in terms of um, contacts cleaning slash polishing and yeah the rough polish is normally used to remove uh, scratches on a paint job or better say on a car and with the fine polish you really get a very nice shine and this also adds a little protective layer basically the wax um, adds a very good protective layer um, to a paint job and it also helps yeah with the video game systems and handheld systems and whatever I uh, try to clean slash polish. Okay, those are for the most part all the cleaning agents that I use and next I'm gonna show you all the tools that I use when it comes to cleaning. Since I try to clean everything as good as possible, I also have a lot of times to take all those uh, handheld systems or video game systems or whatever uh, completely apart and therefore I have a lot of screwdrivers in most cases uh, you can actually disassemble a system just by using the um, Phillips head screwdriver so I have a lot of Phillips head screwdrivers in different sizes also those jewelry screwdriver sets or the screwdriver set with uh, yeah a lot of different sizes especially the small ones if you want for instance uh, disassemble a laser unit in one of those systems but I also have a lot of uh, flathead screwdrivers and they also come in very handy when it comes to disassembling uh, video game systems and also cartridges and a lot of uh, video game systems, cartridges and also handheld systems, they also have some special screws or security screws and in many cases you also need um, yeah, a set of uh, Torx screwdrivers or screw, um, screw bits and one that is one that I have to use very often is this one. This is a screwdriver uh, slash a Torx screwdriver size 8. And as you can see, this is one that is just a regular. Let's focus, camera, please focus. It doesn't want to focus. Okay, now, this is just a regular Torx screwdriver. For instance, you need this one to uh, open uh, Philips CDI video game systems, for instance, then also um, Mega Drive games, for instance, then I guess, if I remember correctly, you need them to open up uh, Microsoft, uh, the original Xbox and also the Xbox 360 had some Torx screws inside, but in some cases you need one of those. This is also a Torx uh, screw bit size 8 and this one has a hole in the middle. Please camera focus. Uh, I hope it focuses. There we go. You need one with a hole in the middle. Um, video game systems like for instance um, for the PC Engine Duo you need one of those and also for other, yeah, there, there are actually a lot of times where I need one of those. And just for an example, I have here four different kinds of uh, Mega Drive slash Genesis games. And if we take a look on the back, those two are PAL games. And this one, for instance, needs this Torx screwdriver 
uh, or screw bit with the hole to yeah to open up this cartridge then here we actually have one of those 4.5 millimeter um, security screws we need one of those those are all all three of those are the 4.5 millimeter security uh, screw bits and yeah the long one I needed the long one for my Sega Nomad because the Sega Nomad has one of those security screws and it's a very long um, yeah screw hole so I needed one of those and uh, for instance also the Sega Game Gear has one of those security screws all the other screws are Philips head screws and uh, you need even a longer one like this one but actually a longer one if you want to disassemble uh, a virtual boy a Nintendo virtual boy for instance and yeah like I said you also need one of those 4.5 millimeters to open this one another PAL game then this one is a Genesis game and you can open this one just with a regular Torx um, screwdriver or screw bit size 8 and this one this is the uh, Dattel Pro CDX this uh, appeared in my um, Sega Mega CD review a long time ago and uh, with this cartridge I will, um, I'm able to play all regions or all um, yeah all regions basically uh, on my um, Mega CD Model 1 or Model 2 as long as I use it with my Mega Drive Model 1 because this is the version for Model 1. So this is not an original release of Sega but uh, yeah this one actually only has the, the Philips head screws. Then um, you also need, or oh, this is another one, this is the 3.8 millimeter um, security bit and this one you need if you want to open for instance uh, Super Nintendo games or Super Famicom games or NES games you have them here on the back or the Virtual Boy games they also have the 3.8 millimeters and I'm actually not sure the Game Gear yeah Game Gear also has the 3.8 millimeter screws so the security screw bits are very important if you have to open up uh, games and also systems so this, this is the main reason why I also have those ones and I only know of one other security screw which uh, which you will find if you want uh, if you try to open up the uh, Nintendo Game Boy because they have the so-called TriStar uh, screws I actually opened up my Game Boy a long time ago and I didn't had one of those screwdrivers but I I have forgotten which screwdriver or screwdrivers I used uh, instead in order to get in into the um, Nintendo Game Boy but this is one that I also miss or better say that I haven't bought yet for my collection slash for all my tools that I need when it comes to cleaning uh, but let's continue the next tools that I use when it comes to cleaning and everything is just a brush a normal and soft brush and yeah I mostly use it just to apply a lot of the um, cleaning agents uh, if I wanna um, yeah get rid of some of the price stickers or whatever then I yeah use this brush to apply goo gone or this silicone remover that I use actually and I also use the brush when it comes to cleaning circuit boards and I use it in combination with those compressed air um, sprays and this is also uh, one of those things that I use very often, especially when it comes to um, open up systems and cleaning systems, uh, because yeah, you can use it or you need to use it for so many things. You can clean with this stuff the circuit board, or let you can remove the dust, but in combination with the brush, you 
um, you can remove a lot more dust because a lot of times the, the, the dust that um, got into the system, especially if it's an old system, then there is a lot of dust inside one of those systems and it kind of sticks to the circuit board. And if you only use the compressed air, then you get rid of surface dust, but a lot of the dust sticks right to the board. And if you go over the board with a soft brush, you don't damage anything. Uh, none of the small parts like transistors or capacitors or varistors or whatever. Uh, and you can uh, loosen up the, the dust and in combination with the compressed air, you can get it out of the system or yeah, off the casing or whatever. Then the next tool that I use a lot of times and I think actually this is the most important tool that you can actually have is an old toothbrush and I use it for all kinds of cleaning especially when I disassemble uh, a system completely and then I take all the plastic parts and uh, wash them in the sink with some dishwashing soap then I use uh, the brush to really scrub over the, the, the surface and all the interns of those plastic parts. And in the end, since the toothbrush was made to clean your teeth and all the interdental spaces and without hurting the gums, uh, yeah, it's a perfect tool uh, to clean and refurbish old uh, yeah, old systems or also I use it for the controllers or whatever. So in the end you can really clean all those um, those parts without uh, damaging anything because uh, yeah, the brushes of the toothbrush, they, they don't scratch anything. So this is really, in my opinion, this is the most important tool when it comes to cleaning, an old toothbrush. Then one other thing that I just wanted to mention is when you uh, wash any part in the sink, uh, yeah, any plastic part, uh, let's say the casing of a video game system or, or so, you can use one of those kitchen sponges, but I would highly recommend that you use the soft side and not the rough side, because the rough side basically, uh, yeah, it's like a rough sandpaper and in the end you will yeah you will clean the system slash the casings but in the end you will scratch uh, you make a lot of scratches with those just wanted to mention it but in the end yeah this is basically also one of the tools that i actually use when it comes to cleaning then of course for all kinds of cleaning agents uh, i also use a lot of um, yeah paper towels I need a lot of those when it comes to cleaning then also a lot of q-tips they are also very handy and I use them a lot when it comes to cleaning then every time I use one of those car polishes I also use polishing cloths because they are very soft and yeah they are perfect when it comes to polishing and then what I also use but not very often are those um, dusters and I only use them to uh, yeah basically for surface cleaning to clean some uh, video game systems or handheld systems or handheld games which I already have disassembled and and cleaned before so in the end just yeah to get rid of some dust over time then two other things that I use which are more for uh, refurbishing actually or keeping things intact are those two things this is an oil and this is a grease they are actually more for RC motors or gears uh, for model making for instance and yeah I use those for instance to grease or oil gears in some systems like for instance in an uh, yeah to grease the, the the, the gears of uh, Mega Drive Model 1 because it has a front-loading CD tray so you have some gears inside that also need some oil slash grease over time and I also use those to uh, grease up the rails of a laser for instance and yeah 
that's the reason why I also have some grease and some oil. Then besides the, the paper towels, I also have um, always at my side somewhere, uh, yeah, basically a cloth. This is an old t-shirt, a very old t-shirt. And I use those um, when, it, uh, when you have to clean something, um, like for instance, like a cartridge slot, because uh, you wanna clean all the contacts in a cartridge slot and if you would use just a paper towel, this would completely rip, rip apart in the cartridge slot and would actually, yeah, maybe, uh, um, yeah, leave also the, the, the bits of the, the paper towel inside. So you need something stronger and this is uh, why I use also a piece of cloth. And I also use it uh, in combination with the WD-40 uh, to buff up the, the systems to, to give them a perfect shine like I mentioned before. Then one cleaning agent that I actually forgot to mention before that I don't actually use that much uh, but it's a pretty good cleaning agent is this one this is Mr. Clean the magic eraser and uh, yeah it's actually a pretty cool a cleaning agent you can use it for a lot of things you can remove dirt then the only thing where I also use it a lot if I have to is to remove magic uh, sorry permanent marker also on game cartridges or on systems if you have some because somebody wrote his name uh, on the cartridge or whatever then this is perfect then you can use it to remove all kinds of dirt or most kinds of dirt and actually some people also say you can remove scratches with this magic eraser and yes you can do this but only in the combination with uh, with car polish at least in my opinion because I actually tried it and I'm gonna show you later on what I mean uh, because just with the, the, the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser uh, since it works almost like a very fine um, sandpaper uh, it is true that you can remove the um, scratches with the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser but without polish it's uh, you won't be satisfied with it but like I said before I, I'm, I'm gonna show you later on all almost all the things that I've showed you before in action and um, yeah how I use all those tools and all those uh, cleaning agents but let's continue I'm gonna show you now the last two tools that I also use when it comes to cleaning all the video game stuff and the last two tools that I use are the vacuum cleaner and a hair dryer and I use the vacuum cleaner mostly for surface cleaning especially with a brush attachment I a lot of times I go over the systems and with the brush attachment it's actually uh, yeah it's very easy uh, to clean a lot of those systems if I already have cleaned them before of course this is just to remove some dusts and with the brush attachment you can easily also clean uh, a lot of the vents of those uh, video game systems but I also keep it always at my side if I um, open an old system that I got new to my collection because a lot of times if you open an old system there is a lot of dirt and dust inside and uh, yeah it, when I clean those systems with the compressed air I don't want all this dust and dirt flying around in my room so this is the reason why I uh, always have the, the vacuum cleaner at my side so that I can suck up all the dust or uh, dirt that I remove with the compressed air. And I would not recommend that you directly use the vacuum cleaner on those old systems. I mean, okay, on the casing it's fine, but don't use it on circuit boards or anything because it can happen that because of the power of a vacuum cleaner it can happen that you might rip out uh, a, a very small part like a varistor transistor or uh, yeah capacitor or anything from the circuit board and yeah 
so you can actually damage the circuit board with the vacuum cleaner. And the hairdryer I mostly use uh, only on old scotch tape, which uh, yeah, which you can find sometimes on old game boxes, and also for some uh, stickers slash price tags, I also use the the hair dryer and also to remove other um, tapes like duct tapes or anything because a lot of times um, you may find a, a box of a video game system that people tried to seal up or to um, yeah basically to close those um, boxes with duct tapes or packaging tape or whatever and this is the reason why I use uh, also the hair dryer for my cleaning of video game systems and everything. Okay, but I'm gonna show you now almost everything in action. Uh, and next we're gonna start with the cleaning. And I thought we start with some basic cleaning of uh, yeah video game cartridges.